So Russ, take us back to that first day. What happened from the road, you drive into Taste of Summer. Was it just a mass of swirling well, water actually, and Well actually, 6.30 was nothing. There was nothing here. But there was some sort of release further up the valley. Right, so it was just heavy, heavy rain. It was heavy rain. No, but it didn't nothing. even, we'd actually just, just about got out of nothing. And then there was some sort of release further up the valley. What do you mean by release? Well, it was like a dam was built or something happened and it just blew. And that's when it came through, kind of like a mini tidal wave. You know, my partner left here at 6.30. It was fine, it was just like this. And 10 to 7, it was rushing through here like a river. 10 to 7? Yep. That quickly? Yeah, yeah. Like now, it was up the valley as well. We're hearing stories from up the valley that there were explosions. Did, are you hearing I, those stories? I, I don't. I'm you not haven't aware heard of that. that. Okay, no. that's here at but the I have, moment. I have but we talked are. to people that have talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing the same. We're, we're mm. asking anybody who can whistle blow on that. Were there explosions up the valley? But that really sounds like an unusual event, doesn't it? Really unusual. Well, something let go anyway, and it happened really quick. So. So what was the upshot of that? Suddenly, I've seen footage of your your front was just a swirling mass of water with mud. Wasn't yeah, it came through here because we're one of the lower areas of this road, and it came through here like a like a river and flood. And so it, you could you could walk against it, but it was not that easy. And then so, through all your packing sheds as well. Oh yeah. And, and what what was, do you grow here, just Russ? Tell us. Oh, what, it's a what, broad range. It's like a Mediterranean climate here. Yeah. So we can grow a lot of things, mm. but mainly stone fruit. There's nectarines, peaches, plums, and apricots. Mm. Uh, we got table grapes. Anything that services the shop, will grow. I really recommend their juices at Taste of Summer. They're the best <laughs> juices. And then, Leah, when did you come in to Taste of Summer and see it? Uh, I came in, I, it was after. So yeah. when it was, didn't look like this, that's for sure. It was a, a bit of a mess, wasn't it? Yeah, um, it went through the shop, which is highest, yeah. the highest point of the orchard, uh, at about 600 mil deep. But over there, when you see um, the dirt, there was trees over there. So that was a massive orchard of trees. Yeah, it was all here. well mature trees. You know, been with me for 20 years. 20 years? 20 years. 20 what years does old. it take with trees like this to get them fruiting? How many years? What are you looking probably, at? Uh, probably three, four years you need. Plenty of training. So, so There's a lot of work goes in it. And that's what's sad about a lot of people's orchards that have been damaged the worst are the young trees. And that's oh, yeah. where the biggest expense has gone out <coughs> to develop the tree and then lose them. Yeah, it's quite painful. Can Very you expensive. give us an idea of that? What's the, what's the process there? I, I want people to understand the sort of work hours and, and workload you put into getting these orchards away. Uh, well, an apple orchard, you're looking at, uh, they quote around about 150,000 a hectare to develop. Wow. Yeah. How many hectares uh, have you got here? Well, I've got land everywhere here it's uh you know there's lease blocks and there's own blocks and everything but the worst affected is the stuff that i own of course right. Right? Mm. there's and a fig tree a, the fig tree yeah we got figs oh it's that so was... beautiful that's the one leo you talked yeah. you you said a real <laughs> prayer <laughs> I did. so where we're alive. standing now uh the depth was around about our waist deep Oh my goodness. And then when you walk further over where it's slightly lower, it actually gets to your chest deep. Chest deep That's, over where the... Yes. Where the, that is incredible. Mm. Until, so where, until, where you see the grass here, yeah. it was all a lot like this, or we'll show you another couple of rows. We've just about cleaned everything up, but we managed to take away the soil and then replant the grass, and now you've got it starting to reform so we've come a long way in the last three months. Russ, have you had government help to do this? There's an MPI payment that's due to help, $2,000 uh, per hectare to remove your silt. Does that even begin to cover? Yeah, it gets, what a, you're gets a tractor, a, a truck, a trailer and a digger for about a day or so. <laughs> so it's, it's a help. Have you done yeah. all of this yourself? I've been amazingly helped with um, a lot of lot of volunteers, a lot of skilled people that have come from Christchurch that have been through it with the earthquake. 
and I've come here, I owe them a lot of thanks. That money from MPI, when is it going to come through? Because that's something that's really concerning Liao and me, isn't it? It's, well, we're we, hearing about government money. We are still waiting for a fair bit of money to come. We're not finding anyone who's had any money. Oh, there are people that have had. Um, it's up to the value of 40000 um, That's as, That's where it stops. And then now they've brought in some new funding coming forward. But I haven't seen it all yet for myself. So the amount of work clearing all this must have been uh, what long days of how many of how many hours it ranges the cost ranges um mm, about uh very little to to the land that's not damaged at all to up to 40 to 50,000 per hectare to remove the silt and get it away what it's are just, you doing are you getting a digger and and scraping yeah, yeah. it all off well this there was no hope on these trees here cuz they were never going to survive they were sitting in 400, 300 mils of, of silt deposit. So the tree can't breathe anymore. There's no oxygen getting to the roots. So they just stop, they just die. It's like us suffocating. So there was no hope for those. We had to remove them. The ones over here, we've got some rows that we haven't quite moved because the soil's still too wet. And we don't know if they're gonna survive. Oh, uh, Russ. But we worked out that there's uh, around two and a half thousand cubic metres per hectare we would have had to move. So you can see the cost that's involved in taking that much soil out of the, out of the orchard. Where do you take all the soil to? Well, the council's been really good. Um, we've had a, a base out the front and mm -hmm. they've come and picked it up. Okay. But basically, if you look way over the other side, we've used the excess soil yep. to bund the orchard and lift the level of the protection that we've got okay. from the drain that's over there. But this and also we've raised the sorry, we've raised the level of the orchard floor by about three hundred mil. Yeah. This this loss of trees and the amount you just said you put into each tree, it's must feel like losing it's children. Hard. Yeah, Is it's it hard. like losing Yeah, we we've got a long way to go, it's a long process. Also remembering, like I said, it's three to four years before you get a decent crop. So we've got to wait for a, at least four or five years to, to really get back into it. Russ, so how are long... you coping personally? How oh, are you I'm, I'm with okay. this much stress? <laughs> is that that Kiwi okay? Or it is. It... it is hard. Yeah. It's very yeah, hard. I have to say. Well, the plan is not to stop here. Good. I'm not, Good. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> the feeling about about the government's tardiness, their, their slowness. If you were in government, would you, have, would you have felt you could have got this going a lot sooner? It should be a priority. I know that there's a lot of other priorities, but we're suffering. It's, it's hard on the land. Not only us, but farmers as well, and any other business that's sort of feeding off what we do. You know, it's, uh, it's hard and it's gonna be hard for quite a few years yet, so. Do you feel bitter or angry, or do you just no. want to get the job done? Just want to get the job done, yeah. And this, Lee, we were one of the first to get started in, in removing the silt and removing the, the places that aren't going to crop, because, to be honest, uh, in another six weeks, we're starting to think about next year again. Oh, my God. So we need to put our first fungicide on in about seven weeks, and we've started again because it's very early here. Are you getting sleep? Are you getting enough rest? Oh, I'm going to get some sleep soon. I'm going on holiday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've been working huge days to clear Oh, it's this. been big, big days. What sorts of yeah. hours? Oh, from, from, I don't know, 12 years, 12, 14 hours. Are you getting lots of strangers coming in and helping? Have oh, you been it's been that? amazing. Like I was saying, uh, yeah. we had one day, there would have been 30-odd volunteers working here <sighs> to help. It's incredible. What keeps you going? Oh, those sort of people. Hmm. Definitely. And is it that carrot? Is it thinking, I know the government will eventually come through, the insurance will come through? Have you got, have well, you got those carrots in front of you? Yeah, we, yeah, we need that help. Hmm. Are Seriously. your insurance companies coming? They have. I've been um, actually have got a really good relationship with my insurance companies, hmm. and they've been really, really good. Do you want to say their names? There's several of them because mm. they go through a broker mm. and the broker's been fantastic. I work with Aon Risk mm. and they've been fantastic all the way through from the start. 
Does it make you feel a little powerless to have to just wait like this? Uh, once again, I've had a lot of support um, to get to where we are right now. But it is going to get tough because we've got to convince bankers that we're bankable. Mm. And they expect the payments to come through from the government who say they're going to pay them. That's it. And at some point the bankers will say, no, it's not their job to, to back us. It's their job to bank us. And we need the bank's help. They've been really good. But there's only so far that they can go. I and also think banks... They get you in the good times, they can be there for you in the tough times. Yep, yep. But there's yeah. a bigger thing at play here and it's, it's about food security. And to be honest, if the government needs to support us, they need to support New Zealand's food security. Mm. It's a big part of what we do. Um, you, can't, you can't expect to import products from overseas. We need to be able to produce the food for New Zealand in New Zealand. Mm and it should be seasonal as well. And Lee, I'll say what you were saying the other day, it's really going to impact the food basket area oh, of New absolutely. Zealand. Absolutely. So, you know, I was thinking while we were here in the last little while, how much it's going to impact the whole of the country. It's not, it's not just about you, and that's what we've been trying yeah. to get across for mm. so long, that the prices are going to be are going to skyrocket because the help isn't here and it isn't here immediately. Like, you're already thinking about next year, People in Auckland are just thinking about, oh, they can just go down to a shop and just buy something, even though it's like, you know, two or three dollars mm, more. Mm. You're thinking, will we even get there next year with it? We can't do another year yeah. like this. No. <laughs> and that's the honest truth. Uh, yeah. We have to have some good years ahead of us. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we need each other. Yeah. Russ, if it's tough, are you, do you have someone to reach out to? Oh yeah, I've got good friends and good support. What would you say to anyone else around here who's finding it tough and feeling alone? What would you say? What's keeping you going? Well, there, there's good support groups within the industry as well. They're all there and uh, they've been advertising quite mm. extensively that they're there. I just hope that anyone's having a tough time, they need to mm. contact those people. Mm. Being down here yesterday, it was I arrived and it was so much worse than I expected. And then I, I can't help but think how the government could find endless money for COVID. And COVID didn't turn out to be a big thing in this country. There weren't a lot of people sick early on from COVID. But we had endless money for ads, endless money for tents, endless money for tests. Where's the endless money now? Because this is what we need here. We need money in this area now, don't we? We need government money to come in. Yeah, we don't need to be pulled completely out of the out of the trouble we're in. We just need some help. That's all. Yeah, a foot up. When you look at the land and it costs around that money, forty to fifty thousand a hectare to clear up this mess. Um, however, it was caused, I don't know, but we need just some help to get there. So was this right up the level of it? Was right up these trees? Oh yeah. Uh, if you look down this row, that's one of the last rows that are left, which we haven't uh, cleared out of all the land that we've been doing. And it's typical of what, what we've been dealing with. We've pulled it all out from the trees to help the roots to breathe. To breathe. And then that's been mounted up. Don't forget, we've already taken out half of what was there. Uh, same thing over here. We're just trying to dry it out before we, uh, we work it into the ground again. So you can use this silt, work it into the ground and I think, use it as... I think, I haven't done the soil test yet, mm. but I uh, believe that we've got some real good high quality silt yeah. deposits here. Yep, so it could so make can, next year's crop good. We can good. utilise it yep. and I think we may even be able to plant straight back into this ground. And what was here? We... What was this one? There was more trees. Oh. Um, you see the ones on the left here, we're reaching the point where... Um, where they're about to lose their leaves. This is three weeks, three months after the event. So they're still showing signs that they're alive. So I'm comfortable that they're gonna survive. But these trees, um, they might be just a bit older. They just weren't gonna make it. So we pulled them out. It's better to pull them out if you think they're gonna die and get planting again and mm. get back on your feet quicker. 
Why is that? Just because in terms of your we've morale. Lost a whole year. Yeah, right. Yeah, we'll lose a whole year if we got it. Get up in the spring and see they're dead. Yeah, got it. And we've got to go again and. I see. Everything's the timing, the timing with farming. Well, don't forget we need to order the trees. Yes. So the trees take two years to produce. Wow. So at the time of the flood, if we decide where we need to replace, we need to order them now at budding time to get our trees in two years' time. The so courage, it's a long, long, the courage long, long of process. you. <laughs> but the courage of you in the face of all this, you're still thinking ahead, as Liao says, you're still planning, you're still getting up every day and saying, I'm going to work this business. Just the courage of that, Russ. Well, we have no choice. Mm. Um, the day the flood hit, we had to decide whether we're going to walk or we're going to stay in this. Mm. Um, the place isn't worth anything when it's flood stricken. So everything we did to the property, we're actually increasing its value every day. That's we're incredible. doing something that's going to improve it from where it was before. Mm. And we have to forget about what was before the cyclone. Yep. And go forward. What we were then and what we are now is increasing from ground zero moving up. And what you will be. Yeah. But, yeah. but if I were looking to invest with a good, hard-working business and somebody I could rely on to get out of bed every day and do the business to make it a success, you'd be the man I'd invest in. Oh, really. Cool. No, it's really, <laughs> no, really. It's just incredible, the courage to get up and do this. You could be sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, oh, no. pitying yourself, holding your hands up and wailing yeah. and waiting for the government and you're, and you're getting up every day and working. Now that's the worst thing to do is sit around. Yep. You'll just feel worse. Yep. I so, think there's um, no mistake that your surname is Hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's look at some of the other positive things you've done because it's incredible the grass. You've re sown grass over here and it's flourishing. It does look like the soil is going to be good and that's yeah. just straight salt deposit. Wow. And the grass is absolutely bolted and that's only five weeks. And we're hoping that the, the silt deposits around the tree will slowly work its way into the soil again. You've, you've pushed the soil back to let them breathe, so you had to go around um, all these orchard trees. Mainly the volunteers, the hard-working <gasps> volunteers that came along did each tree. That's incredible. And don't forget that it was solid mud. It was just slush when they did that. Aren't so, they, are they locals mostly, or are they from all uh, over the place? Like I was saying, they came from Christchurch, from Auckland, from... Uh, all over, a lot of locals. A lot of locals that came just just walked in and they wanted to help. Did it give you yeah. real heart that Kiwis oh, still huge. have that amazing heart? So the next time we get ourselves on the feet and there's a disaster somewhere else, I think I'll be on my way too. Gonna help someone else. Do that. <laughs> Pay it forward. Yeah. That's the plan. We still don't know if these trees are gonna survive, mm. but we think it's worth a punt. Yep. Um, something about each row that you see there's no point having two thirds of them survive and one third die yeah. because it's a unit of itself. So if 10%, if, if more than 10% die, then you might as well take them out, I think, and start again. You know, so that's the decision we'll make when we get to spring. Is there more they can do to help you? No, so we're, the, so we're, the new trees? We're nearly at the point where um, we're up and running and, and operating an orchard the way it normally is. Mm. But it's taken, you know, three months to get there. Mm. You might have heard the hydrolators working over there where we've just started pruning again because mm. we can access the land. Mm. So we're getting there. What if someone wanted to fund your trees, your new trees, wanted to do that for you? Would that help oh. to buy the new trees? Yeah, any kind of funding. I don't funding, know, it would be eh? amazing, but uh, it's, uh, yeah. That would be amazing if someone wants to fund the new trees of Taste for Summer. Could they have endless free fruit from you after that? Oh, we can work something out. <laughs> <laughs> Liao, what made you love Taste of Summer most of all and uh, gave you the hope when you first came down here? Someone that was married to the sky. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a beautiful heart, beautiful place here. Oh. As soon as I came here, I was like, this is the beacon of hope for all of this place around mm. here. So let's try and pour as much as we can, you know, people, volunteers, money, mm. whatever we can to, to help support 
and um, see this is what he says he's the courageous one that just says whether they live or die I'm going to keep trying yep you know and that's the kind of heart we need through all of New Zealand and the know? thing is when one business starts thriving again like Taste of Summer others around will yeah. get inspired and they'll go if he can do it I can do it yeah. if one yeah. house is cleaned up others will get hope and, and say if, if they've done it I can do it so thank you is there anything else you'd like to say to oh, Kiwis there's, there's, watching this? There's plenty of other people that are worse off than me as well. I mean, uh, I'm just the tip of the iceberg. There's some people out there that are, that are far worse off than me and they're willing to have another crack as well. Mm. So there's, there's plenty of us. Uh, 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 there's a lot of us that'll, uh, that'll keep going. Please, we'll keep New Zealand, please to the, our wealthy Kiwi brothers and sisters, if you can please invest in these businesses and show New Zealand and show this government and show them that their courage is going to be honoured. Please, we need investors to help businesses like this. Right, so when we were walking out just before from the places where you pulled the trees out, you just said a really powerful story. You said when you drove away from here on the day of the flood, what did oh, you feel? On the day of the flood, the, the water was coming through here like a, a river in flood. It was um, pretty dire. Uh, we got everyone out and then um, yeah I sat at the the gate and looked back for about 10 minutes and I you know, drove away and I actually said goodbye I didn't think that we would be coming back again I thought the river would have carried on um, lifting and we may be coming back to nothing at all but what really lifted us was the the volunteers that came through and that lifted everyone's I don't know, just lifted your whole body up and you want to go again. So that's why I'm here now, I think. Mm. That's incredible what human kindness can do. That's all we want from our government, isn't it? Kindness, yeah. personal kindness, yep. human to human. Yep. So it's together a, we can get there. Yep. Yeah. It's a hard question to ask this, that moment when you thought you may <coughs> never see it again. What did that feel like to you? Oh, it was soul destroying right at that moment, but it's only a moment. Great. And then we went away and. We and here you and are. Talked, and we can do this again. And look how beautiful <laughs> it looks already. Yeah. Incredible. So, all we need is that human kindness from our government. Thank you, Russ. Okay.